Um, I'm going to start off by talking about social media and where it fits within internet marketing. Because everybody in this room has grown up in a very sort of digital oriented world. There are people in this room who remember the world without the internet. And that might seem impossible to you guys, but Paul included, um, we grew up without the internet, so it's quite a new phenomenon for us. So I'm going to start by putting these into a bit of context for you, because I think you take for granted an awful lot of things about the World Wide Web and um, you know, that phenomenon called surfing, because you've grown up with it. But do you actually know the scale of the internet and what it really can deliver for you as individuals and for business owners? Now what I want you to do today as well is think about you having your own business. Not just the fact that you're part of the Film Academy, but think about if you were a business, how would you use social media and the internet to promote yourself? Because ultimately, if you decide to go freelance as individuals, you will be a business unit, okay? You will be your own person. You may decide to choose other career paths as you get older, and then you might decide to launch your own business and your own career. So think about social media and the internet from today's presentation from a business head, okay? Right, let's get started with them. <clears throat> Do you know when the internet actually actually launched? And on what decade it actually launched? It actually started in the 1960s. It was um, it was developed by the US government for um, for them to communicate in between their own departments secretly, like an intranet, I'm sure you've heard that expression. And then it evolved to colleges and universities, and then it actually um, moved over to Europe, and then it became the World Wide Web in the late 1990s, and that's when it became a much more of a commercial tool. And as of June the 30th last year, the, the global population in the world, if you look at this figure here, 7 billion people on our planet and it's growing exponentially every single day. Yeah? So the 7 billion people on the planet, how many of those people do you think use the internet? Percentage wise, out of 100, how many people? There's 34.3%, so over a third of the global population use the internet to serve every day. So there are currently 2.4 billion people that's a lot of people surfing the internet. When you think about that, all those people you can connect with potentially are on the internet. And that, since the, since the millennium, can we all remember the millennium, that big thing that happened in 2000? Yeah? Yeah, I, I did, I partied. Um, <laughs> no, you did. You're too old. <laughs> <laughs> it's grown 566%. The usage has grown 566% since the turn of the millennium. It's phenomenal. And there's a still like two thirds of the population has still got to have access to the internet. Think about the scale, it's massive. Okay. If we look at Europe, where does the United Kingdom fit in terms of um, internet penetration? And that means how many people in that country have access to the internet? So in Russia it's 68%, in Germany 67%, but in the UK it's 53%. Okay, so 53% of the people in the UK are using the internet. Massive amount of people, and you think there are 7 billion people in this country. So the internet is slowly, slowly weaving its way into the fabric of our life, everyday, everyday things that we do. And why have we looked at these figures? Well, because if you, as a business, want to target people, that's the size of your potential audience that you can target. Okay? So those are the people who are actively using. So let me say to you, if you were a business, how do you think you might currently source your clients? How do you get, get clients into your business? What do you think you might do? How would you advertise? Yeah, you might do a TV commercial, you might do radio, you might do print, you might do leaflets. The internet, largely what you can do on the internet is potentially for free. Yeah, and you think about all the social media platforms that you use, another thing, all the apps you've got on your iPhones and your iPods and your smartphones, yeah? Not much of it is free, okay? So when you do own a business, one of the first things that you need to do is have a business plan. Where are you going to go? How are you going to grow and develop your business? And within that business plan, you need to have some marketing communication tools. How are you going to promote your business? How are you going to advertise? How are you going to get new clients? How are you going to sustain your business? Anyone ever heard of the full marketing piece when you were at school? Can you remember? Did you do anything like economics at school? When you looked at marketing, you looked at product, price, place, and promotion. Four fundamental pillars of marketing. You need to look at your product, you need to get your pricing right, you need to promote it, and you need to promote it in the right places. So that's how marketing works. Maybe 10, 15 years ago. And here in marketing, these are the different ways that you could promote your product. Then this massive thing happened called the internet and the World Wide Web and surfing and social media. And marketing became much more complicated and a lot more sophisticated. So this side, 15 years ago, was called um, 
offline marketing. Remember that. Now what we have, we've got this whole new world of online marketing that's developed because of the internet. So you've got things like content marketing, blogs, podcasts, ebooks, social media, and that list really can run all the way down here. And if you think about all the platforms that we currently use, Bebo, Hush of the World, Continue, all that lots of other things in the store. <clears throat> and search engine optimization because of websites, you need to be able to make sure that your websites are getting found by all the search engines. So it's a much, much more sophisticated marketplace for businesses to have to advertise and promote their business. But one thing that is also changing, <clears throat> consumers now have much, much more of a voice. Okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. And you think sort of 15 years ago, you used to sit and watch the TV. I remember the TV with just five channels. I really, really do. I remember the TV with just five channels. So it's Paul and a few other people, I'm sure. But now, yeah, we've got a whole plethora of different types of advertising. But consumers can post comments on forums, on Facebook pages, on um, Google Hangouts and Google Circles. Yeah, so consumers can talk much, much more about their experiences with brands and products, with records that you like, with brands that you like, with, with music that you share with your friends. And people who manufacture these products are now having to listen to what people are saying about their products because it's publicly available, it's available across the whole world, through social media, through internet marketing. So that's a big shift in how people like um, Kellogg's, people like, I don't know, Faith, who make shoes, they have to listen to what people have to say about their products now, and that's a big, big difference. So, if you're a business, what you have to consider now is not just all of these things here, but you have to think about, well, how can I use things like social media to complement all the other services that, I, services that I currently have to market my product? Yeah, but you wouldn't follow. It's much, much more blurry, okay? Because you, you know, on TV you see things like, here's my Twitter address, follow me at, you know, Mike Stevens. Like us on our Facebook page in order to enter our competition. You might get a mailer through the post which says, follow me on Facebook, yeah? So social media is kind of appearing on lots more traditional media platforms than it used to. And you probably just see, you see that because you've grown up with that. But it's evolved to be a lot more sophisticated than it used to be. <clears throat> so what's online marketing? Would anybody like to see, uh, define what you think online marketing is? Can anybody say what you think it is? Any hands? Don't be shy. I know you're not shy. So you interact, help yeah. yourself. So yeah, if you've got... There's no right or wrong ways, no right guys. So, so yeah, yeah. This is, uh, give us your feedback. Yeah, it would be really good. Does it really then target who you target from what you say, like, online? Yeah, it is. That's a good point. Well, if you, if, I can, if you looked it up, really, it's the art and science of using or leveraging, that's a bit of a posh word, using the internet to convey your message to people in a way that motivates them to take action. Because ultimately, if you're a business, you want them to either buy from you or inquire from you or be interested in, in your services, yeah? So internet marketing is a tool that allows you to do that. But what it's not, it's not a standalone process, okay? You have to think about social media in the context of the bigger marketing picture. Yeah, it's not, it's not a, a part-time fix. Social media cannot be used to drive just sales and just um, money. It's about developing and cultivating relationships, okay? Right, let's move on. There is a little acronym that I use um, when I think about how to use the internet. It's called the ACT methodology, and I'd like you to take copious notes about this, because I'm going to have a little exercise for you to do at the end of it um, in pairs to see how many people think this is really exciting and I can do it. So successful online marketing can be broken down into three distinct components, okay? And that's A, C, T, very simple, the ACT methodology. So we're going to start with the letter A, and A stands for attract, okay? So why do you need to, if you were a business, why do you need to attract people to your business? <coughs> Why would, you like, why would you need to attract people to your business? So you have someone to market to. You have someone to market to, yes, absolutely right. Anything else? To make, you need, pardon? To make money. To make money, absolutely, it's the bottom line. To make your business more popular. Yeah, to make your business more popular. 
definitely. Because you need to stand out, don't you? You've got competitors. You definitely need to stand out. It's a very crowded marketplace. And you've got to find a way of grabbing people's individual attentions so that you can stand out and attract them ultimately to your website. Yeah. Because your website is like it's like it's like gold. Yeah, it's the most valuable tool that you can have as a business owner. So when you think about the social media platforms that we all use, you're not really in control of them. They control you in a way. If they decided oh, we're gonna wrap up and close down and go tomorrow, if you solely built your business on those platforms and it's gone, you can't control it. But your website, you own, you develop, and that's why you should put your time and your effort and your investment, okay? Right, so you need to get attention to stand out, you need to get people to visit your website, okay? And how do you think you do that then? If we know we need to be doing it, how would you do it? How would you get people to visit your website? Search engine optimization. Search engine optimization is one of those, yes. Okay, well, I have this funny little acronym, I really like my acronyms, and this one's called You Have to Have a Great Bond. And I really do mean that, but BOD stands for something else as well. B stands for your brand, okay? If you had a brand, if you were your brand, you would have to be able to sit to um, describe yourself in a single phrase. It would have to have absolute clarity and your offering, what you offer to people, the benefit of what you offer to people has to be absolutely crystal clear, okay? That's what I mean by your brand, your brand equity. You really need to know what your brand offers, what it delivers, and you have to be able to, to succinctly portray that. Now O stands for outcome. Great, I see lots of people writing notes, I like that. Thank you very much. Now, outcome means what does your product or your service ultimately give to the person who's going to use it? Okay? Whether it gets rid of a headache, whether it um, soothes them to sleep. Yeah, whether it makes them feel tall and sexy because they're high heels and they've got nice sparkly bits on them. What does it ultimately do? How does it make that person feel and what benefit does it deliver to that person? And then D stands for differentiator or USP, which is another marketing term, unique selling proposition. Differentiator. What inherently sets you aside from all your competitors? What makes you different? What's unique about you? So think about that as well. Why should someone choose you over and above anybody else? Okay. Now, it's the number one reason why most brands and businesses fail with social media, because they don't have a great board. They start off with something which is a bit lukewarm, they're not really sure how they're positioning it, people don't understand what they're offering, and they won't buy it. But if you're crystal clear, and you're delivering a real benefit, then that will become amplified on social media. If you do a really bad job, and you're not quite sure, and your offering's not great, people don't understand what you do, social media equally can be your downfall, because it just amplifies everything that's going on. People will not talk about you in a good manner. Okay, does that make sense? Any questions on that one? No? Yeah, so you've all got your app down, you've all got board. Yeah? Okay, now C stands for convert. <coughs> And you can convert potential customers in two ways, okay? So everybody in this room, I can say, is my potential customer today, yeah? If you want a nice big checkbook in your back pocket, and I want to whiz you away for some more training <coughs> sessions. You are potentially my, my customers, but you're strangers. I don't really know who you are. I've met you for the first time today. Now, I have to today can either convert you into two ways. Convert you into a consumer, so that you say, I'm going to consume every bit of information that you give me. It's fascinating, it's interesting, I want more. And sign up for that, okay? Or you can become a customer and say, Jack, we really love what you did today. I want to come along to another workshop. Here's my money. Yeah? That's two different ways. So they're slightly different, aren't they? Yeah, slightly different ways of converting people. Now, social media is a tool, is perfect for attracting strangers and converting them into consumers, okay? As a business, that's what Paul and I do, we get people to sign up to receive our newsletters, information about our workshops, about our e mm -hmm. send emails out, people download our e-books, they consume the information that we provide. You very rarely will convert a stranger directly into a customer first time. It can happen, but not very often, because on social media it's about developing long-term relationships. And over time, if you nurture and develop those relationships, people will naturally 
want to become a customer, and they're much more likely to be a lifelong customer. You get it right. Okay? Now, how, how can you convert people into consumers? And I touched base on that just on the previous slide. Through things like blogs. Has anybody here heard of blogs? I'm sure you have. Anybody use blogging platforms? Yeah, great, okay. There's e-zines, you know, they used to be called newsletters in the old days, and they're called e-zines because they're electronic. Yeah. Everybody knows about Facebook pages and Facebook groups. We can get people to sign up to our Facebook group or page. We can ask them to make a comment on our blog, sign up to the RSS feed on our blog. You know RSS feeds? Is there anybody know those? Not a head? Sure. Yeah. And, and also e campaigns, email. Yeah. We can send people an email and they can subscribe to receive other emails from us in the future. So, why is this part important? Okay, why is the conversion part <coughs> excuse me, important? It's because even if they're not buying from you and they're not customers, they are still being exposed to you in your brand, in your messages. Okay, so it's ongoing advertising exposure. <coughs> they might not necessarily become an automatic customer, as I mentioned, but over time, consumption of valuable content over time will equate to clients. They will naturally want to purchase from you. No, they will know who you are, they will like what you're offering, and they will trust you as an individual or a business to want to buy from you. Okay? So what do you think might be the best conversion tool to use? You mentioned it before, I said it's like gold dust. Your website. Your website. Yeah. So, the best conversion tool is your own website. Alright? Why is that? Why do you think that? I mentioned it before. Why is it the most important tool? It's the most unique thing about your business, because like, it's all about you. Mm -hmm. So it's all about you, and there's that element of control. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> social media profiles are too limiting. You can't put all the information that you have on a website onto a social media a Facebook page or group. Yeah, and your website is actually it's a massive opportunity to promote and advertise um, exponentially with lots of information. And social media is not a selling tool, as I mentioned before. It's about developing and nurturing relationships. But on your website, you can have an element of e-commerce on there if you wish to. Okay? T in app methodology, like T down, stands for transform. <coughs> there are two parts to transforming a consumer um, and a customer. Okay, two parts. First of all, you have to do a good job. So if you've got a product or a service, you have to do a good job. Yeah? You don't just say, come and buy my, um, my, um, I don't know, my DVD on how to do organic gardening. And then the DVD is scratching and it's a bit clicking when you put it in the system. Okay? And it's a bit, it doesn't really work. Or you're selling um, high quality moisturising cream when you use it, it's sticky and it's horrible, it doesn't actually rub into your skin very nicely. Just some examples, but you have to do a good job, you have to deliver what you promise. If you say you're a fantastic, amazing actress, then you have to be able to prove that you are. Okay? If you say, I can produce a 30 second commercial, and it'll, be, it'll really, um, really, really demonstrate all of the core equities of your brand, then you have to be able to prove that you can. Okay? You have to use your success to attract more success. When you're onto a winner, Make sure you sing and shout about it and dance about it and promote it every which way you can. You have to use your success to attract more success. Yep, so make sure that you promote it and tell the story of how you've been successful, why you've been successful, um, and let people know about it. Okay? So that's the tea, that's the tea in Transform. Does that make sense? Yeah? Any questions? No. So, master attracting people, convert them into consumers, and then transform your success into a, a, another attraction magnet. So can you see how it goes full circle? That act, that act cycle, yeah? If you attract people, you nurture them, you develop the relationships, you transfer them into consumers and long-term into customers. When you get a customer that's successful, you use those success stories to attract more people into your brand, and the cycle goes on. Yeah, that's how you kind of use social media. If you can keep that in mind when you're thinking about marketing and promoting things, 
that will really help you to understand how to use it. So, if you are looking at developing an online marketing strategy for any type of business, decide what you are trying to do. <clears throat> are you trying to attract people? Are you trying to convert them into consumers? Or are you trying to transform something you've done really good into a new story that you can create and generate big buzz about and attract more people? Yeah, so select what you want to do and then measure how to do it successfully. Now this measurement side here is a whole new presentation and we don't have time to talk to you about that today. But we can do it and maybe look at it at another time, okay? There are different measurement tools that you can use. So now I've got an exercise for you. you know, get away. Can you do it in pairs? Would you mind doing it in pairs? I think it would be really useful if you to do it in pairs. There's a little case study that I have here. And that might be enough for individuals actually, here. Um, and it's about a, a, a fake business, a creative business. And she's using the app methodology. Yeah, so read it through. And you've got to select which part of the A, C, or T she's using while she's marketing her business. Um, so, you can see that I've got this one here. Yeah, so I've
So she's now converted Jane from a consumer to a customer. Yeah? So Jane loves the quilt she gets from Sue, and it even has a nice little note in it saying, thank you very much. My granddaughter loves the quilt so much, in fact, she drags it around the house, and it's become her favourite blanket. And Jane has to take a picture of it and sends it to Sue. So Sue takes this picture and puts it on her company blog. It's a success story. What a lovely, emotive story for people to read. It pulls at your heartstrings. Oh, isn't that nice? And it's got a nice picture of it as well. So, she puts the picture and shares it on her blog, so she transforms the success with the customer into an, an attraction too. Absolutely right. And she explains how each quilt leads to long-lasting memories and how happy it makes her to see her customers happy. So yeah, and then it goes on and Don enters the picture, but wasn't sure, yeah. He's thinking about buying a quilt, but wasn't sure if he would enjoy it. He stumps upon the blog, yeah, sees the image and thinks, okay, I really want one of those as well. So he is what? This is the last bit of the story. From a stranger to a customer. Remember I said it may not happen, but it can do if you get it right. So did that little story kind of help you to think about how you can apply social media? Yeah, it really helped. Okay, thanks. Right. Now, I'm going to move on and talk to you about another tool which I'm sure all of you use called Twitter. Does anybody need to stretch, stand up, take a five minute break? You can do, we've got plenty of time. Yeah, it's yeah. a bit early, so if you want to... Do we take, we'll give you five minutes so you can relax your brain. Do a little comfort break if you need to. You can do a Tony Robbins get up and go, come on, let's go, let's have it. <laughs>